Europe has long been dependent on foreign energy resources. Apart from coal and limited gas reserves found in the North Sea, it has had to import almost all its fossil fuel from abroad. This includes Russian natural gas and Middle Eastern oil. Europe's dependency on resources is so great that the Nord Stream 2 project, a pipeline to bring natural gas from Russia to Germany, continued even in the midst of an international scandal which followed Alexei Navalny's poisoning. At a time when Europe is shifting away from fossil fuels, why is it then investing billions on a pipeline in the North Sea, especially on one that will increase its dependency with regards to Russia? Well, the answer is that Russian natural gas is seen as a sustainable investment because it fits into Germany's hydrogen strategy, which announced 9 billion euros in investments as part of its coronavirus stimulus package and as part of Europe's hydrogen strategy. Hydrogen is a resource that can be produced in several ways. The first is from natural gas through a process called methane reforming, which releases carbon into the atmosphere, and because of this, hydrogen produced this way is called grey hydrogen. There's also the possibility to capture the carbon through carbon capture and storage, or CCS for short, which turns it into blue hydrogen. Alternatively, it can be produced by breaking apart water molecules through a process called electrolysis, which releases oxygen into the atmosphere and labeled green hydrogen when produced from renewable energy or low carbon energy sources. So while Europe doesn't necessarily believe that natural gas will be the fuel of the future, it believes that hydrogen will be, and it'll need natural gas to manufacture in the first place. This is because electrolyzer technology, despite being invented in the 19th century, is still in its infancy due to a lack of development, and the costs associated with it are still too high. Yet, the EU is determined to end up on top, and is in a race with China to develop the best technology to make sure it will retain the jobs associated with hydrogen in the future. Franz Timmermans, the European Commissioner for the Green Transition, estimates that clean hydrogen could fill 24% of the world's energy demand in 2050, with sales of roughly 630 billion euros that could represent 1 million European jobs. While he has committed to reach 100% renewable energy by 2050, until then, natural gas from grey and blue hydrogen will be used to satisfy demand. But why hydrogen? We've all heard of hydrogen cars for which there aren't enough refueling stations, but what else can it be used for? Well, it turns out, quite a lot. Transportation is the first thing that comes to mind with cars, but that's the worst type of vehicle to use hydrogen for, with batteries being superior. Trucks and buses make more sense because the weight of the batteries gets significant really fast. It also might be a way to power planes eventually, with Airbus announcing a pathway to a hydrogen plane by 2035. It can be used in the chemical industry to produce methanol and ammonia, the building block of the fertilizers that help feed the world. It can be used to produce carbon emissions free, steel and cement, which are still what all of our buildings are made from. It can be used to generate high temperature heat, which can heat up your home or be used to brew and distill alcohol. Quite important indeed. Safe to say, it has a huge role to play in reducing carbon emissions, especially if it can be produced in a renewable fashion. Yet, when talking about hydrogen, it's hard to ignore the elephant in the room. The fossil fuel industry, which has lobbied 250 million euros in the past decade promoting hydrogen, according to Friends of the Earth Europe, a Brussels-based NGO. It is also promoting hydrogen products. See this article we saw a few minutes ago? Yeah, paid for by the fossil fuel industry. While the fossil fuel industry has done terrible things to people and the environment, we shouldn't just discard hydrogen because of it. The reason they're supporting the hydrogen economy is because of the possibilities that economy offers them to stay relevant and use the same skill set. It also allows them to make use of existing assets and avoid them being declared as worthless within 10 years. So, in a way, they frame the sustainability transition around hydrogen in order to be able to continue some form of business as usual in the service of sustainability. It's quite brilliant when you think of it. Cold and calculating, but brilliant. The fossil fuel industry is a major player in the European Hydrogen Alliance, which was set up to guide Europe towards the hydrogen economy. And who better, with all that experience? I mean, the worst they could do is delay the switch to clean hydrogen and keep the EU dependent on grey and blue hydrogen to keep milking that natural gas money for another 50 years. But you know what? I trust them. They never follow the money. Will Europe's hydrogen even be enough? Probably not. As I said earlier, the EU is resource poor. Even if it creates the technology to electrolyze efficiently, 
It just doesn't have the renewable energy potential to produce all the electricity and renewable energy that it needs to mass produce green hydrogen. Instead, it'll rely on importing. Look, again, an article from the oil lobby. I'm telling you, they're everywhere. With projects now being planned and approved left and right, especially as part of the coronavirus recovery deal, like the recent Franco-German hydrogen facility for 3 billion euros, or a 270 million euro solar farm in Spain to produce green hydrogen for the Dutch port of Rotterdam, hydrogen is going places. Maybe not into Nikola trucks, but that's an entirely different story. This was Into Europe. If you liked this video, make sure to like, comment and subscribe to get the latest updates on European news.